Patterson, Liberal Senator for Victoria. For more on the uh, various political stories of the day, James Patterson, thanks for your time. Uh, you'd be someone pretty Morning, keen Tom. to pay down the debt. Are you worried about the warning from Chris Richardson today? Well, we should take this warning, as we've taken every other warning in this area, very seriously. Uh, gross government debt is now approaching $500 billion. It is a serious problem and it's at the top of the minds of everyone in government. Uh, it's something that we've tried to address and we've made some really meaningful inroads to while we've been in government, but certainly not as many inroads and as much progress as we would have liked to. Unfortunately, the Labor Party and the Greens and some on the crossbench have used the Senate to block a lot of the savings initiatives that the uh, Turnbull government uh, has proposed. So we haven't made as much progress as we like, but we hope to make more progress on it in this budget and coming budgets. Is it enough to just say you hope? Because this is part of the criticism from Deloitte Access Economics that you're relying on, for example, cuts to grants to the states that don't seem as though they might happen in some cases, other changes that are just stuck in the Senate. You've got to take responsibility and figure out another way, surely? Well, we absolutely take responsibility, Tom, and we've proposed a number of different measures to address these problems, but the political reality is we don't control the Senate. We can't dictate to it what it can pass and what it won't pass. Uh, all we can do is develop plans that we think are good and that are measured, uh, put them up to the Senate for their consideration and do our absolute best to persuade them to vote for it. But ultimately, uh, a combination of the crossbench, the Greens and the Labor Party, uh, if they choose to, can block any initiative that we make to try and bring the budget back to surplus. So um, that's why I say we hope uh, that we'll make progress on it because ultimately uh, there is a lot of power in their hands. What about higher education? We know that there have been attempts to reform this and save money in the past that failed. Now there's going to be a pared back version of it. Has there been a case made to voters why higher education in particular is going to be cut if we're also talking about you know, innovation, jobs of the future? Well, as you would have seen in the papers this morning, Tom, the Education Minister, Simon Birmingham, is going to release a report on higher education. And overall, it's a really positive picture. Um, it shows that uh, higher education is very well funded and, and well functioning in Australia. It shows that other than veterinary science and dentistry, uh, all university courses are funded at greater than the cost that it, uh, it takes for a university to deliver those courses. And it shows that in recent years, uh, the revenue to universities has grown faster than cost. So that's an overall, that's a positive picture. I, I'm not privy to and of course can't share with you, Tom, any uh, you know, decisions that might be in the budget about higher education, but um, that's an important starting point that informs the decisions that government will make. OK, we'll see what happens in that speech later on tonight. What about metadata in this story last week? Did you agree that it seems to indicate that this is uh, being used essentially to chase down leaks and is that a worry if so? Well, I was troubled to hear that the Australian Federal Police had accessed the metadata of a journalist <coughs> without a warrant. Um, that's certainly contrary to the law. Uh, I was pleased that they self-reported and have referred this to an ombudsman and there's going to be an investigation. There should be an investigation because this should not happen and it is troubling for anyone who cares about a free society and a free press. So um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, a full explanation and a full investigation of how this breach occurred and why it occurred and, if necessary, uh, what steps are needed to make sure that it doesn't happen again. The breach itself seems to basically be a procedural matter, but what about looking at this principle that if this is being used, you know, if the procedures are followed properly next time and it's being able to be used to simply access uh, information to try to chase down leaks, is that a worry and should that be something that you should reconsider? Well, if pr proper procedures were followed, then the AFP would have had to go to a court and seek a warrant and be granted a warrant before it could access the metadata of a journalist. Um, that's not actually anything new, Tom. Previously, uh, telecommunications companies stored, for example, the telecommunications metadata, just the, the phone metadata that's stored, and it was accessed under that kind of arrangement where a warrant was required. So um, that, that's not an unusual and new thing, and that is the appropriate thing. I mean, if it is necessary to access a journalist's metadata in particular, um, a warrant should be required to do so. It's appropriate that there's a judicial oversight of that. We don't want the police uh, just on their own, on a whim, accessing uh, the private and confidential information of a journalist. But still, I'm just asking on that, that principle, do you think it's appropriate to be accessing to chase down leaks? Well, I mean, it, it, a 
the police should be able to conduct an investigation uh, that they receive a warrant to investigate, and they should not be able to conduct an investigation uh, where they do not receive a warrant. I mean, the principle of investigating uh, a leak is uh, that confidential information has disclo been disclosed contrary to the law. Uh, so unless we're proposing to change the law and make it acceptable to disclose confidential information, then yes, when the law is breached, it should be investigated, but it should be investigated within the law uh, and not outside it, as it appears to have happened in this case. OK. Uh, what about Facebook? Uh, this story today that they're using data from teens, algorithms to gather data to figure out when teens are feeling anxious, depressed even, and selling that information to advertisers. How concerning is this and does something need to be done outside the current laws we have? It, it was worrying to read that this morning, Tom. It, it, it seems like, frankly, predatory behaviour by Facebook towards young people uh, when they're collecting data on the moods and emotions of young people and then uh, selling it to advertisers. Um, th there are restrictions, there are laws that apply to um, how you can target young people in terms of their collection of their data and also what is appropriate to advertise to them and how to advertise to them. And if Facebook has breached those, then they should be penalised. Um, I was relieved to see that uh, they've uh, apologised and withdrawn this document and have said they're going to do an internal investigation as to how this occurred. But it is a reminder to all young people um, and to parents of young people that uh, the only information Facebook have on, has on you is things that you voluntarily give to them, and that applies to any social media online platform. And frankly, uh, there are much less... Um, uh, you know, careful, um, carefully run organisations out there online collecting information. So we all do need to be really careful about um, what we choose to upload online and, and takes responsibility for that either as parents or as young people. Mm, well, I'm not, tipping not too many people get through all those terms and conditions for some of these big companies. Uh, GST, there's a review going underway. Uh, this is a, a fraught area, obviously, but if you're going to do a review and there'd already been sort of a, an outline plan to eventually get WA more money, does this review mean it could come sooner for WA? Well, Tom, what's different about this review uh, in contrast to previous reviews is it's not just a review of how or why uh, GST is distributed or how that may or should be changed, but what the impacts of the distribution of GST have on our productive capacity, on our productivity. Um, that's a really important new angle and that will give us some new information. Um, ultimately though, Tom, as you know, GST is an unusual tax and it is the joint preserve of the states and the federal government and any changes to the GST require the agreement of COAG. So this is just one input which the federal government can provide to that COAG process so that the premiers, uh, or in this case the state treasurers and the treasurer can come together, discuss this issue and make a decision about it in a more informed way. OK, government contract story in News Corp newspapers today that it could be a, a mandate to make sure that companies getting some of these tenders have at least 40% women in the workforce. What do you make of this? Well, this is um, p potentially coming out of the, the Senate's uh, References Committee in Finance and Public Administration, Tom, which I'm a member of, uh, and had an inquiry uh, last week into this issue and examining this issue and it's certainly something that people have proposed. Um, the federal government puts a range of criteria on the contracts and tenders that it puts out, um, for example on environmental or Australian content and so this may be one other that could be added to it. Uh, my view though, Tom, is that ultimately the first priority of uh, any government tender is, is delivering uh, the quality services to Australian taxpayers and the number two priority is delivering that in a cost effective way and if at the same time you can also accommodate other social objectives um, such as gender uh, then I think that's a positive thing but the first and foremost has to be uh, quality of services and, and value for taxpayers money. So you wouldn't want this mandated then if that uh, did come in then perhaps the one and two might uh, be out of the way in terms of those priorities? Well, all I'm suggesting is it shouldn't come at the expense of that. I don't think any Australian taxpayer would accept uh, that it w if we mandate criteria that override either quality of services or value for money. Those are uh, absolutely sacrosanct and should be at the absolute top of our priorities as a government. And, if, and at the same time, we can also do other good things, then great, let's do that. But it should never come at the expense of that, in my view. OK, Liberal Senator James Patterson, thanks for your time today on AIM Agenda. Great to be with you, Tom.